Let's talk about when you were, uh, who tried to kill you? <laughs> I wish I knew. They would have got caught. <laughs> you, know, you don't know? You don't know who no, did it? I, I just know. That to this day, this person is just out loose potentially? Yeah, but but the thing with me is I don't blame them. I blame me. So here's why. I was um, juggling many extremes at that time. I was a 36 and 0 at the time. I had a lot of pressure on me. Uh, and I and I, I don't fall victim to anybody. I, I was drinking. I was partying. I was in places I shouldn't have been. So I take full responsibility for everything that happened to me. And I'm complete. And I have I have moved on. Um, you know, I hope those people that did this have a better life and they, for you know, they're, you know, God has forgiven them. I've moved on. I, I'm serious when I say this. This is not something I'm just trying to portray. This is real. I had no choice. If I, with that type of, that type of an assault on me, um, um, it, it, it they didn't just take my life. They took my, they took my, they didn't take my life, but they took my career. Um, I had to forgive. I had to move on. I can't be holding on to that. Or I gotten cancer, it would have killed me or something. I had to let go, so I did. And um, now it's just a cool little fixture, <laughs> as you can see here. Oh yeah. You know. Tell us what happened. What happened? Uh, I think there was an altercation in the bar. I was pretty. I was pretty drunk, and uh, I was. And by the way, I'm four years and a month sober now. I've been sober clean now for f over four years. Oh, my congratulations. Life completely, thank you. My life has completely changed. So I am now sober and I love it. Um, some days are hard, but uh, at that time I was, I just couldn't deal with the pressures of, of, of everything that was going on in my life. And I was uh, partying and drinking and I just was getting ready to leave boxing. I didn't really, I didn't have the fire anymore to fight anybody. I was kind of just, I was 34, 35. I was kind of tired of it all. I kind of felt like a slave and I had slave masters. It just, it just, it was really, really losing its appeal. Anyway, I was out in Phoenix, Arizona and we were partying and doing whatever. And I got in, into an altercation with about four or five guys. They got kicked out of the bar because I was having a party there. It was my party. It was after I won a championship belt and they waited for me. As I walked outside, I just decided I'm going to go home. It was probably about one forty-five at night, two, two in the morning. And I started going that direction to my, to the house, which is about a mile and a half away. We lived from the Scottsdale area. Um, I just heard footsteps behind me and a group of men surrounded me. And like I said, I was so obliviated that I didn't even picture. I couldn't even see their faces it was like blurry for at least that's how I remember it. And I choose to keep it that way. Um, and one of them, I remember one of them sticking out their hand like, hey, it's all good. We just want to just make everything cool we, we apologize when i went to shake his hand the guy to the left of me i just saw something in my peripheral vision of a something shiny and like a fishing lure type thing and and right when i turned boom you got cut my neck open and slipped me right open and blood just started pouring out of my neck and i stepped back and i mean it was like it was like a sacrificial lamb like everything was just pouring out of my of my body and um Next thing I know, I see one of my friends come running up. He's going, well, you know, I see him like kind of confused. And then I see him put his hands up and they started viciously stabbing him. Oh, God. And then he, uh, I don't remember anything after that. I kind of, I lost so much blood, but I just remember him looking at me with his, even though he was stabbed three, four times, he was looking at me like, oh man, we're going to lose this guy. Then I woke up next in the ambulance and the paramedics were full of blood and they were dropping syringes and they were panicking. And I just told them, I said, I just felt this calmness come over me. Like everything was okay. And which nothing was okay. But I just told the paramedics, I was like, guys, guys, um, I just remember telling them I'm clean guys. I'm clean. Cause I know they had my blood all over them. And I, for some reason, I just felt like it was, I, I felt like I had to tell them that. And then I just blacked out and then that was it. And I woke up a day and a half later in the hospital and uh, they were, and I had 369 stitches in my face. So that, that, that changed my life, you know, and that, that was the same year, by the way, in 2011 that I won two championship belts and overdosed on drugs the same year. So I had problems. Yeah. And I, at that time that I overdosed on drugs, they bought me, they, I did flatline and they brought me back with a defibrillator. So I was wow. a problem child. I have a, I had a lot of problems and, but the good news is <laughs> I'm a YouTuber now. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> no, the good news is <laughs> the good news is, is that I bounced back and you know I didn't come I wasn't successful in boxing. You know, I was 36 and 0 up until that point. And then when I came back, I lost. I got knocked out. And I, I took it on the chin like I should have. And I said, you know, that's that's it for me. I, I came back in another fight and I won that fight, but I got um uh I, I had to have emergency back surgery. And that's what ultimately took me out of the game forever was the back surgery. That otherwise I'd probably still be there like the older 40 something year old guy, punch drunk boxer, never knowing when to <laughs> quit. So I'm glad that God <laughs> took me out of the sport, to be honest with you, because I'd still probably be a punching bag for people. <laughs> But I'm not, so I can say what caused I'm, the what caused the back injury was that part of the attack also, or was that no, like just no, years no, of... that was a, a right uppercut from Robert Davis when I fought Robert Davis. He threw out my vertebrae, and it and I was able to box with it through through for the rest of my career. But the last fight against uh, Gilberto Dominguez when I knocked him out uh, when I was running to the neutral corner, uh, I just felt I was like, that's it. This this is career ending. I felt it just yeah. two steps after I dropped him and it went to so they could start the ten count. I knew over. This is done. I'm this. I I need surgery and mm. I got surgery. I got an L four L five fusion and uh, the rest is in the books. I mean, I yeah. had to walk away, but I'm glad. I'm going to tell you right now, like it was a blessing in disguise because I would I'm not I would have never known when to quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would not know when to quit. So I'm glad <laughs> that made me quit. Why? So your career was going so well. I mean, you you had all this success. Why were you turning to drugs? And I mean, usually when I think of somebody who goes into drugs, it's because of, you know, low self esteem. They have a bad life. Like they they turn to that for comfort of some kind. I think for me, it's because I had I had everything too easy. You know, I was uh, going to the Playboy Mansion. I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing, uh, and it was just too fun. And I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. And and the pressure of the sport, I kept knocking everybody out. I kept I kept passing every test with A plus, and that mm -hmm. started weighing on me because everyone's like, ah, this guy will take him the distance, or this guy will take him this. And I don't know why. I just I was an overachiever. I put way too many expectations on myself. I started listening to the critics. I started listening to the naysayers, and it just was like a weight that was just weighing me down every every fight. I'd knock the guy out and be like, oh no. Like I knocked out another, oh, like here's more pressure. Like I just couldn't handle the pressure, man. That, that, you, I, I just, to be honest. Okay. I would think that if you knocked out a guy, you'd be like, all right, I'm the champ. No, I'm like, <laughs> who's, who's the next one? Who's that? Because okay. they would, they would not even wait 20 minutes before they'd come into my dressing room and be like, all right, we got the next fight lined up. Let's get ready. Let's get back in the gym. And I'd be like, damn, man. Like, yeah. It was, it's a tough gig, man. It's boxing is tough. And that's why my props go out to all those world champions that are there and they do it because, man, you guys are something else. So you just got taken out by drugs and women and the lifestyle, the partying. And it was I'm sure there was a lot of that. I mean, it, you know, I mean, like I said, I think a lot of people go into drugs for other reasons. But maybe when you're in the high life celebrity sports, like it's easier to fall into it just because you're around partying. Well, here's what here's, here, here's what happened to me is like after I retired that's when I went into a really dark night of the soul type of period where 10 years of my life, I was like, man, I'm no longer the champ. I'm the chump. Like mm -hmm. now I, when I used to go to the bar and people would be like, Hey champ, let me get you a drink. Let me get you this. Let me get you that. It was now I was like, they're like, Oh man, when are you going to come back and fight again? Oh, you're still boxing or what are you doing now? And I was like, wow, I'm no longer the guy anymore. So mm -hmm. that's when it was uh, in 2019, September, I mean, uh, December 26th, uh, I, that was my last drink. I uh, was at the bar and I was looking around and I just, I was looking at my friends that were older than me. And I was like, man, I don't want to be in their position in five years. And I just kept looking around and I, I took one last shot of the tequila and I was like, you know what, either I stop now or, um, it's, uh, this is going to be my life forever. And yeah. I put down the beer, I put down the tequila and I walked out and I waved at everybody. I go, Hey, I'll be right back. Never went back. And I have not been back. That wow. was it. That was the last for me and never went back to drinking.